Good morning, welcome to today's e-program. If this is your first time tuning in, you've chosen a great day to do so. I am Cassie Olson, Program Coordinator at Pelican Lake, Sandy Shores, and Lake Cochran Recreation Areas, as well as Hartford Beach State Park. Every day this week, we have had an e-program posted on our Facebook page, so be sure to check out all of those programs so far. I've decided that we're gonna call our Friday programs Fun Fridays. I know you've all been working so hard on your schoolwork and we have learned so much this week. So I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit and we are going to make different Nature 3 themed snacks that go with every program we've done this week. First things first, let's go wash our hands. All right, all clean. On Monday, we learned all about coyotes. We learned that they have four clawed toes on each paw. So to match this cool cloudy weather we have today, we're gonna make hot chocolate with coyote tracks in them. So you're gonna need your hot chocolate, a marshmallow, chocolate chips, and a Reese's peanut butter cup. All right, I've got my water nice and hot, so I'm gonna add my hot chocolate mix. Oh, this one already has marshmallows in it. It's gonna be extra marshmallowy. All righty, we'll stir this up. Grab your big marshmallow, your Reese's peanut butter cups, and your chocolate chips. I found that if you microwave the marshmallow for 15 seconds, it makes it really soft and gooey, so the, mar the chocolate goes in really easily. So, press that in. That's gonna be like the paw pad. And then the chocolate chips have little swirly things on the end. Those are kind of like the claws. Now they have four claws, or four on top of their paws. So, there's my coyote track. Now, I did learn that they get top heavy, and I'm gonna set it in there, and it's gonna go upside down. So get a good look, because that's gonna be the last time you see it. Carplunk. On Tuesday, we learned all about fish. We're going to make fish pizzas. I want you to be as creative as possible on this one. You can use bread, pizza dough, or an English muffin, which is what I'm going to use. Uh, you're gonna cut out the shape of a fish on whatever you decide to use the crust as, and then you're gonna decorate it with regular pizza toppings. So, we need to cut out his tail. Oh, you're also gonna wanna preheat your oven. I already did that, but you'll put it at about 350 degrees right in that area. And then by the time we're done decorating, it should be all ready for you to go. So for the tail, I just cut out a little triangle, like this get rid of my extras. Do you like my fish plate that we're doing this on? It only seemed fitting. All right, so there is the body of my fish. Now, we will add the pizza sauce. Doesn't take much. The fish is ready to roll, and now, I'm kind of fussy, so I'm only going to put pepperonis and cheese on mine, but I'm going to pretend that the pepperonis are kind of like the fish's scales. So they're going to be all over, except for on his face, where his eyes would be. I might have to get a little creative since I'm not putting anything else on it. All right. My fish is all scaled up. Add some cheese. A little more cheese and we're set now I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about five minutes or right around that area the cheese just so it's melty everything I'm cooking with is already pre-cooked so it's just to warm it up and get it ready to go all right have an adult help you put this in and take this out of the oven as it is very hot but mine is all done and it's a fish Wednesday was our owl day so we're going to make Owl crackers. You're going to need graham crackers, strawberries, bananas, apples, oranges, chocolate chips, and either yogurt or frosting or whatever else you want to use as your base. I'm going to use yogurt because it seems like it'll fit better with my fruit. So take your graham cracker and then your yogurt or your frosting or whatever you decide. Put that on the cracker. The gogurt is not ideal, but it works and it'll be tasty. Spread that around. And then we're gonna start out adding 
our eyes, which are gonna be the bananas. If you remember, I always have very large eyes. My banana was quite green still, but it's gonna work. Then for the insides of their eyes, we're gonna go back to grabbing chocolate chips and we'll put a chocolate chip. Oops, mine fell in the frosting. So it's gonna be a pink one. Put them right in the center of their eyes. For their beak, we're gonna use, I mean, I have little cuties, but you could use an orange or whatever you get. This is your show, you be creative. Here's what I got so far. And then for his feathers, we're gonna use strawberries. So space them out. All right, one more. And finally, we learned how important their wings are. We'll finish it off with little apple slices as their wings. Are you ready to see the most unique owl ever? Whoops, lost a, fe lost a feather. There he is. There is our fruit owl. Yesterday we learned all about habitats, but one thing we didn't cover was worms. Earthworms need food and habitat that soil provides. They pull in residue from their bur burrows and they help mix organic matter into the soil, which improves the soil structure and allows water to flow through. So for our habitat lesson snack, we are going to make dirt in a cup. This used to be one of my favorite snacks to make. You're gonna need chocolate pudding, Oreos, and gummy worms. Get your chocolate pudding ready and then we'll put it in a big bowl and we're gonna start crushing up our Oreos. I didn't have instant pudding on hand, so I had to boil it, which was not the best thing, but it works. So we'll put it into our little bowl. Then we're gonna put our Oreos into a Ziploc bag. You can take out the frosting in the middle, but I think it's a nice touch, so I'm leaving mine in. Zip it up, get all the, get all the air out first, and start crushing up your Oreos. All right, I think that's pretty crushed. Now, we're gonna wanna put our gummy worms in, into our chocolate pudding first. So sink some of them down. My pudding's still warm. So these might get a little soggy. All right, we put a few gummy worms in there. Now we're gonna put some of our crushed up Oreos on top. And then let's put a few more bonus gummy worms in because I think that those are the best part. And you've got yourself some dirt in a cup. I know these snacks weren't the most nutritious, but while we were making them, I know we had fun. And I won't lie, this was the most cooking that I've done in a while. Today's challenge, we're gonna take part in the World of Hearts Challenge. Families have begun to put hearts around their homes in their windows. So families that are going on walks and people who are headed out to work to keep us safe and fed and healthy can see them and know that we're thinking about them. We wanna spread love and hearts and not germs. So take a picture of these and then post them to Facebook with the hashtag world of hearts. In case you don't know how to make a heart, grab your piece of paper, paper, scrapbook paper. You can grab white printer paper and decorate it or you can leave it white. Fold it in half and then on the line with the crease right here, you're gonna cut out the shape of half of a heart. This one's gonna be a little smaller than my last one. Ta-da! Make sure to take a picture. Let us know you're doing it. Next week, we'll be doing e-programming on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So get outside and get some fresh air this weekend. The parks are still open, so make sure to go out and go for a hike on the trails, play on the playground, and just enjoy nature. Thanks for hanging out with me all week, and I will see you Monday morning.